Welcome to Shooter University. Today we're going to talk about the differences between single action and double action revolvers. Stick around, because class is in session. Thanks for joining us at Shooter University. My name is Ed Thorell from Firearms Education and Training, and you might know me from that other show. What you may not know is that I'm actually a former history professor. So I'm used to being in front of a great big crowd like this, and uh, this is nothing new. But with the massive growth within the firearm industry and nearly 10 million new guns being sold to brand new owners who've never fired a gun before, we thought that this created an opportunity to help folks that are new break into understanding the language of guns in the most simplest way possible so that they could better understand what they're getting into, understand the terminology, and keep up in a conversation. So because of that, we're going to try to break some new ground here. And we wanted to start off by talking a little bit about the differences between single-action revolvers and double-action revolvers. Um, basically, we're talking revolvers. That's a subject that's near and dear to my heart. So, like we always do, we want to show safe and clear. So, you can see that there is nothing in the cylinder here, and nothing here. So, no big surprises, no loud bangs, everything's safe. Now, when we're talking about firearms, uh, and, and, and revolvers in general. They break down into two basic types, the single action and the double action. Now, when we're talking about firearms, especially pistols in general, they're all going to have three main components, known as the barrel, the frame, and the action. The barrel is what the projectile is going to travel through. The frame is going to be the exoskeleton that holds everything together. And then the action is going to be all of the moving parts, springs, levers, whatever. If it moves, it's part of the action. Now, with that in mind, first thing we want to do is talk about the single action. Now, with a single action, what we're talking about here is how the it actually functions. Now, in order to talk about how that functions, we need to understand how it's going to work. Now, for starters, with a single action, you start by pulling the hammer all the way to the rear. And when the hammer is pulled to the rear, it's going to turn the cylinder into the place where it's going to lock up aligned with the barrel so that the bullet can travel straight through the path. Now, it's also a single action because the trigger performs one function, letting the hammer go. So, single action and function, when the hammer is pulled back, it's going to turn the cylinder into position, it's going to lock, it's going to line up the cylinder so that the, the, the revolver can be fired. Simple enough. All right. Now let's talk a little bit about the double action. Now, the double action actually has two different functions to the trigger. But what they have in common is, is when the hammer moves to the rear, it is going to line up the chamber with the barrel so that the bullet can be fired. And when the hammer it drops is a result of the trigger being fired. Now, it did that in single action. What's interesting about these is it also has a double action mode in where pulling on the trigger is going to move the hammer to the rear, which is going to have the cylinder turn into place and then fire. So in double action, the trigger performs two functions. It cocks it as well as releasing it. Once again, as the hammer comes back, it's going to rotate the cylinder. It's going to line up the chamber so that the bullet travels cleanly straight down the bore of the barrel and then out to the target. Bang. Now, 
It's easier to show how that works because uh, you can see it better with a single action. So bear with me for a minute as I take this apart so you can see the inner workings of this. We're going to start by pulling out the, the arbor. We're going to open this up and we're going to take the cylinder out of the single action. Now right here, you're going to see these little notches right there at the center of the cylinder. And those are what turn the cylinder and actuate it so they can turn into position. Now, mechanically what does that is, if you look carefully back in here, you're going to see what's called the hand, or in Ruger's terminology, the paw. This is the hand right here. Might be able to see it better from here. This little thing here is going to engage those little um, notches on the back of the cylinder, and that's what's going to turn it into place. And then right here, this little bump sticking up is what is actually going to lock the cylinder to position to keep it lined up so the chamber is lined up directly with the bore so that um, it stays true and centered when, when the cartridge is actually fired. This is the lock which holds the cylinder in place. And you saw the, the hand which advances it. So, you have the same mechanics that are involved within the double action, but the double action does not work in that function when I have the cylinder open, which is why I had to show you with the single action. So, those are the basics of single action versus double action. In single action, the trigger performs one function. It drops the hammer. In double action, it provides two functions. It cocks it, and then releases the hammer. That's pretty much it. That's pretty basic. Now, later on, we'll have another class where we talk about the differences within semi-automatics, because we also have single action and double action semi-automatics. But that'll be a subject for another day. Anyway, we thank you all for sticking around. Thanks for joining us at Shooter University. I'm Ed Thorell from Firearms Education and Training. Y'all take care. Class is dismissed. <laughs>